can't believe it, but 40 years ago today, wow. a little show called Late Night with wow. David Letterman premiered right here on NBC. In its original 11-year run, Late Night racked up five Emmys, a Peabody, and a fandom that embraced the weird, sarcastic, and crazy comedy that brought Letterman to it. One of those fans also happens to be a former <laughs> guest on that show, our very own Harry, Harry. Smith. Harry, where are you, buddy? <laughs> So uh, fans of the show will recognize the idea of someone hanging out a window, say a second story window, maybe even a little higher on the top of a building and holding something, I don't know, like a watermelon or a cake. Um, so we've, uh, we hope sufficiently jogged your memory because something really special is coming up. But in the meantime, a little traipse down memory lane with David Letterman. First off, we fans never knew there was a show called Late Night. Welcome to our show, it's Late Night and... Uh... Forty years ago, we knew it as, and called it, Letterman. And the number one shocking revelation about Mick Jagger, uh, once slept with Robert Redford for free. And, uh... and we talked about it constantly. Like, did you see Letterman last night? Ignition. It appears that David Letterman has come out of that mission. This is the stupidest thing I've ever witnessed network money spent on. And, and frankly, I'm proud to be a part of it. Let's get physical, physical. As a talk show, it was conventional, only in that it had a desk and a host and a band. It was irreverent. Hey, shut up! Often silly. Sometimes sardonic. We didn't really plan today's show. <laughs> But that doesn't mean it still can't be fun. This is the uh, General Electric building, and, you know, I have a little gift, and we thought, what the heck, let's just drop in and... Uh, and always you know, in uh, on its own jokes. You mean we need authorization to drop off a yes. fruit basket? Yes. To drop off a fruit basket? Yes, you need authorization. Oh, this is going to be fun to work with these people, isn't it? Steve O'Donnell was Letterman's head writer for 10 years. So bring me to the day-to-day. -day. You become head writer of this show. It's Monday morning, you're in the writer's room, and what's it like in there? The experience of putting on a, a late-night comedy show was like simultaneously putting out a small-town newspaper and organizing every single day a small-town parade. Because they were various... <laughs> and while David Letterman didn't exactly invent irony, he and his writers conspired to make it a kind of comedy we couldn't get enough of. Like, so what, like two of them toasted? There was a little freedom to experiment. In one way, the pressure was on to do an interesting show, but there was also like, man, no one's watching, so we could do the most strange, <laughs> surreal things we could. Until Letterman, the laws of late night consisted of a monologue, host laughing at guest stories, and maybe a song. It was not this. Or this. There, there's very little I can do from this position. And then there was Larry Bud Melman. Good night, everybody! <laughs> Neither fish nor fowl. Well, why don't you crawl on the oh, fence well, and take a nap? But more of a befuddled foil. Sleep tight. A frequent comic non sequitur. I hope it didn't hurt your glasses. Played by the late Calvert DeForest. The Letterman regulars were often within reach. Bob Costas, Marv Albert, and yes, Al Roker. What's this? I think you ought to think about having that biopsy. <laughs> the Letterman owes some debt to TV pioneers Steve Allen and Ernie Kovacs. Letterman boldly discarded the norms, besmirched the bean counters, and glorified in the dump. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Harry... Smith, Harry, come on. Guests like this reporter feared we'd not be able to roll with I think, oh no, we did, we made fun of you. Yeah, oh, that's, that's right, you, you were nice to her and you were Yeah, that, that's how that works, and tonight we'll make fun of her and be nice to you. <laughs> and sometimes there was an uncomfortable Dave Guest dynamic. I thought that I would never want to do this show with you. Now why? Because you thought I was a... Uh, uh... <laughs> David Letterman did not break the mold. He melded it to fit his vision. And a big part of watching the show was watching Dave 
enjoy what he had wrought. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, so we have the cake, and in just in case you don't remember, just roll this tape, roll this tape. Take a look at this for a second. Yeah, lots of cakes, lots of stuff. <laughs> <Flying. laughs> Okay, sure. Happy birthday. Right? Oh, God. Yeah. Just because? All right. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. So here we go, kids. Bob, you want to zoom in on this? See, it says, happy 40th anniversary, late night. Nice. And of the things that I've done on live television over 40 years or so, in the words of David Letterman, this may be about the most lame. (laughs) But are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to try this. Here we go. There you have it. Yeah, very nice, very nice. And David Letterman, who rarely appears on network television, will be on late on late night with Mm. Seth Meyers late tonight. Well, early tomorrow morning. Pretty cool. Very fitting tribute there. Thank you, Harry. Who's house is that? Frequent guest on Letterman. We do what we can. Well, well, only because only because I was close, and if somebody canceled, (laughs) I was literally across the hallway. So how many times were you on? I think five times. Wow, pretty cool to know like that. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Harry. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.